Hey, good morning, everyone. How's it going today? Coach Alvarez here, back at you in another episode of Coffee with Coach. Hope you're up doing well, making some moves, got the mind in the right place. But if you don't, let's get it back in the right place, right? Let's get it moving in the right direction. So yesterday was a really good day for a couple reasons. Um, but uh, I'll go into that in a minute. But the um, what I was talking about yesterday was the path, okay? Uh, if you didn't catch the video, just scroll back down, catch the pa uh, the video on the path and what that is. And again, I'm in a different book. Um, this time, it's the Code Evaluation Protocols Jocko book. Um, I want to talk about today, which is the other part of yesterday, which is what do you do when you fall off the path? Okay, so we we're talking about having goals, setting goals, and like, you know, getting on the course and doing the things that you're supposed to be doing and then what happens life happens right you fall off the path and uh i want to share with you uh what jocko talks about then i'll kind of just share some of the examples that i that i've encountered myself or whatever so what do you do when you fall off the path um you can and you will fall off the path it happens to everyone sometimes we do it to ourselves sometimes life hits us with something we didn't see coming People get sick, accidents occur, things happen in the world we can't control, and those things can push us off the path. But you can control how you react when you fall off. What you, what you do to get yourself back on the path is up to you. The situation doesn't dictate what happens to you. You dictate the situation. You decide. When you fall off the path, ask yourself why. Why are you not doing the things you know you should? Do an unsparring self-assessment, identify corrective measures, and ruthlessly implement those measures. Take action. Get back on the path now. For anything that affects the health of your mind or body, see your doctor or professional in the field. This is not a time to rely on a family or friend. You need professionalism, professional help, so get it. That being said, there are protocols to help you get back on the path. And then he goes into the protocols, which... That's like a whole nother um, section here of protocols that he kind of goes over, which is really good. And I'll go over those another time. But the, um, the what do you call it? The, uh, just the, the, the idea of falling off the path and what do you do to get back on it? So um, let's go back to the beginning. You know, people get sick. You know, you get sick, catch a cold. Um, you know, he was actually, I was listening to one of his podcasts uh, before I started this, and he was talking about uh, he had to travel for a couple of weeks in a row, um, and then he was out of the country, and then when he got home from Europe, he got sick. So he didn't work out for like three weeks or something like that. And so, you know, he got sick. He was off the path. He didn't, he didn't really hit weights. He did workouts, but it wasn't the same as like working out, working out with like heavy weights. So he was talking about, which I can really relate to, um, if anyone has worked out before and you, and you do a lot of squats and then you haven't done squats in a couple weeks and you go back to those squats and they're heavy, man, those will get you. You can't sit down for a couple days. Uh, it'll take you definitely a couple days to get back to, to moving your legs like you want to. So anyways, people get sick, things happen, accident occurs. So, you know, he got back to working out and he's back on track, soreness is gone and he's back doing his thing. So that's good. Uh, like I said, accidents occur, things happen in the world we can't control, and those things can push us off those paths. But what you can control is how you react to those things. Situations don't dictate us, we dictate the situations. Um, I'll give an example. Like Last night, as I'm reading this, I was thinking about one of my students that I, if you watched the video last night, if you caught it, I gave a, um, a blue belt promotion last night and a first degree black belt. And one of the guys that I gave uh, a blue belt to, he is definitely an example of the path and falling off the path multiple times, okay? To give you an example, to get a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, if you're not familiar with jiu-jitsu, at least through me, it's somewhere, uh, you start training in about a year and a half later-ish, somewhere around that time, depending on your attendance, you should get a blue belt, okay? You're training two, three times a week, you're consistent, you're not taking time off, um, you know, you're getting all the rounds in, you're rolling with all the, the right people and everything else, asking questions. About a year and a half later, somewhere <clears throat> in that time, you should get your blue belt, okay? But if you let life happen, like this individual did, um, coming, going, coming, going, 
it's three years now, okay? So it took him three years, okay? We're not trying to shame him or anything. I'm just using him as an example that it took him twice the time to achieve that blue belt, okay, than the average person. Because why? Life, man, life just happens. So many things happen, um, you know, like you said, any, anything, just, any, just give it anything that life throws your way. You can use that as an excuse to stop doing what you love to do or what you know you should be doing, or you can stay on the path and fight through it and all through all the rainy days, just, just get the job done and just show up like you're supposed to. But it happens. Anyways, this individual loves jiu-jitsu and he loves the atmosphere and his teammates and, all, and what jiu-jitsu gives him as a feeling, as accomplishment, anything. So last night, you know, I'm like, it's time, man. You know, this guy's been training for three years off and on and uh, he's a great teammate, he's a great student. He brings a good attitude, good vibe to the school. Um, he's good for the, he's good for the mat. Like I enjoy having him in the building when he shows up, okay? It's good times for sure for everyone. And so after three years of coming and going, I finally gave him his, his, uh, his blue belt. Now what he does after this, we'll see. Will he stay on the path? I'm kind of putting him on, on the highlight here, but you know, but, or will he fall off the path? Will those patterns continue to happen? Or will the pattern of consistency and discipline continue to happen? So well, that remains to be seen, because that just happened last night. But it's a good example of, because I asked him in the video last night, in front of everyone, you know, we we're Facebook Live and everything, like, why didn't you just quit? You know, why didn't you just quit? You know, you keep, you keep coming and going, you know, this stuff is, you know, if you take a break from it for a while and you come back, you're getting beat up again. You're sore, your fingers hurt, like your joints, like, you know, it's like anything else. You know, if you do this stuff for a while, you get used to the soreness. You know, you get used to the, to the, to waking up that way and feeling a certain way. And it's a great feeling actually. Like it's a, it's a good feeling. It's not like, man, this sucks. You know, it's a, it's a really good feeling. You know, you're doing something good with your body and you're moving it in the right direction. But when you, you take all these breaks, you come and go, a lot of people do don't come back. Like they don't come back. They just, for one, they don't want to feel that soreness again because they don't want to go back through all the things that they went through when they first, like they first started. They know how, how bad that sucks. And they know that when they come back, there's going to be students that they were better than and were ahead of and were tapping out are now probably going to be tapping them out and smashing them when they come back. And that's not a good feeling either because you were ahead of them, but you took that break. And so you gotta be, you gotta let your ego go, your pride go, you gotta be humble enough to come back and take those whoopings like, like you should because you took the time off and just get back on the path and just deal with it and, and make things happen. So it's just funny how, what happened last night and just kind of that situation, his scenario just kind of goes into what we're talking about yesterday and today. So it's just one of those things, you know, what do you want and what are you going to do to, to achieve it? Are you, how bad do you want to just keep moving forward in a direction and not let excuses come in the way or how many excuses over and over and over again, are you going to keep making? to allow something to stop you from doing something that you know you want to do, something that you love to do, something that you know that's good for you, physically and mentally. Like jujitsu is one of the best things ever. Everyone should do jujitsu. And if you haven't, if you're listening to this and you haven't done it, and you don't, and you need to try it. Like you need to try it. If you're looking for a great workout and get mentally and physically, especially mentally, mentally and physically fit, man, you got to try it. So why would you take a break from that? Why would you do? And there's a lot of reasons. But anyways, this did this this individual, he, he's just like, man, I, I love the team. I love the atmosphere. I love what it does for me. On and on and on and on. And so he came back. And one of the other biggest incentives was a story that he told me um, and I had him share with the rest of the team was he wasn't training for a while. He ran into uh, a friend or family member that he hasn't seen in a while. And one of the first things that they they said to him was, man. You put on some weight, you put on some LBs. And he's like, man, I know I put on some weight, but I didn't think it was that noticeable. I didn't think it was that bad. So he had came back to jujitsu and when he came back, that's what I asked him. Cause I ask everyone that like, why are you back? We'll bring, we'll bring you back. We'll bring, we'll bring you back this time. You know, why did you quit? And then what brings you back? 
And that was a story he shared with me. So I had him share that story with everyone else, you know. And he's like, man, that just did not make me feel good. I just kept thinking about it. And I don't want to feel like that, you know, anymore. I don't want I don't want to walk and see people. And when they see me, they see me like that's the first thing they think of is, man, you gain weight. You know, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good look. You don't you don't feel better when you gain weight on un, 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 uh, unwanted weight. Uh, the self-esteem isn't the same. You know, you're you're not going to hold your head up higher. You're not going to walk around feeling better about yourself, knowing that you're not eating the right food. You're not working out. You're not training jujitsu. You let yourself go. You fell off the path until someone, you don't really like, you see yourself every day in the mirror, but you don't really see yourself like everyone else sees you. Then someone hasn't seen you in a couple months or however the time is. And then when they see you, they see you like what you look like now compared to the last time they saw you when you were in shape, when you were doing things. It's not a good look, it's not a good feeling, but it happens. So what do you do? You can either just say, forget it and stay on that path of unhealthiness and weight gain and everything else, or you can come back, get back on the path, let your ego go, okay? Let your pride go, be, be humble and just say, yeah, I made a mistake, I messed up again, because again, this individual came, came and went like quite a few times, and then let's make it happen for real this time. Okay, but after a while, enough's enough. There's enough playing games with your health and with your life and everything else. You got to buckle down and get to it and say, man, that's it. Like, that's it. And that's kind of like uh, I shared the story with me before where, like, that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, I got my black belt. You know, I wrestled in high school, didn't really do anything with it, was good at it, didn't do anything with it. Boxed for a couple years, was good at it, didn't do anything with it. Um, you know, worked out and everything else and just didn't really do anything with it. I found jiu-jitsu and I was like, man, I'm pretty good at this stuff, man. I like it. Like, I enjoy it. Like, it's it's like, you know, I'm going to get my black belt. Like, that's it. I didn't finish the other stuff, but I'm going to finish this. And then I had a knee surgery at Brown Belt, which I think that was my test. That was a test that was given to me. Like, how bad do you want it now, man? Like, you're right here, right before black belt. And then boom, I got, I'm off for three months with a knee surgery. And that wasn't going to stop me. And eventually I got my black belt, but that wasn't enough. Now I'm a third degree black belt going on my fourth degree. Um, I've already been a third degree black belt. I think three, three and a half years, something like that. I think December will be my fourth, my fourth year as a third degree. It's not going to stop because in my mind, I'm staying on the path. Like I know what it feels like to fall off that path and it's not a good feeling. And I don't want that feeling back. So what do I do? I use those previous experience of falling off the path to stay on the path because I don't want to go backwards. I don't want to feel that way. You can use that in anything, in anything in life, whatever your situation is, whatever it is that you were doing at one point and you're not doing now and you quit. How does that feel? What would it feel like if you kept going, keep going and find out and then see what's on the other side of that. Okay. So Really good stuff today. Again, using, you know, an example of just something that just happened last night, something that I read yesterday and I'm reading today. Uh, and again, um, I want to go over real quick this little quick section. He's talking about getting professional help uh, with certain things that you need and not do not rely on a friend or family member. You need professional help. So get it. A lot of people make that mistake that I know personally. They're asking friends and family members for the help, and those individuals aren't doing good things either. Why would you ask those people for help? They're not gonna, they, they can't even help themselves, let alone help you. So go get some help, get some answers from someone that's been there, done that, doing that, something that you wanna do. Don't go to anyone that isn't doing anything that you're not trying, that you're not doing, man. That's not, it's, that's not gonna help you. I've had quite a few people I know do that, and I'm like, well, look who you ask for help financial help, whatever, man, they're broke, you know, health wise, look, their, their health is poor, this, that, whatever. So get the right amount of help. And if you fell off the path and it happens, get back on it, stay on it and see what happens when you don't quit anymore. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll catch you next time.